Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. All right, we got another episode of Bite Size Business Advice and a topic that's maybe not so business related, but I always say this is the mind body business show. So we're going to take care of our minds and our bodies. We're talking about self care today, three tips to improve your self care. And I have a guest with me who is amazing and she's an expert in this. So first and foremost, Elizabeth Meyer, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, this is exciting. So this is a, a topic, self-care that is, that I think men tend to ignore completely. Uh, <laughs> women understand what, what that is. Good for the women first and foremost, but can we define in your own terms, what is what is self-care before we kind of dive in here? It's such a good question. Um, so self-care is simply about taking care of yourself. You know, there's broad levels, there's micro levels, there's medium levels, but basically it's about tuning into your own self, figuring out what do I need and meeting that need. So like when we're hungry and we get lunch and we eat it, that's self-care. But also when we're feeling really stressed or really anxious and we take care of that, we, we figure out what's bothering me how do I deal with this? And we find a way to cope with that feeling. That's also self-care. Mm -hmm. So about what do you need? What's going on with you? And how can you take care of yourself in a way that's nurturing and kind and compassionate to yourself? Okay. I can see why men are so bad at this. I'm speaking for myself <laughs> uh, in particular. I don't even, I don't think I feed myself all the time. So I'm hungry. I'm like, ah, I'll just, I'll get it later. Um, so we were, we were talking before we started recording. Your clients are tend to be more female than male. Um, I, I want to speak to both parties here because this is so important for men, especially for, for us as entrepreneurs and business owners. You can burn yourself out so quickly and so easily that this is this is a crucial topic for your long-term success, but also for your short-term performance and productivity. So with that definition of self-care, um, you know, I want to dive in and, and talk about the the three the three tips you have. But where do we start before we kind of get there? Like, how do we how do we incorporate this into our day and into our lives? The the awareness that we need it. That is. Yeah, it's such a good question, and I think again, just like knowing that you need it. You know, maybe I'm going to turn it back on you and ask, what do you think? How can right? Because you're your own target audience, right? A male business owner. How can you remind yourself that like eating regularly helps keep your blood sugar up, right? It helps you perform better. You're not dizzy and fatigued and out of it, right? That fueling yourself regularly matters. How can you make that more relevant for yourself? Yeah, that's that's interesting. I love how you come on my podcast and grill me. I'm completely <laughs> open to it, by the way, first and foremost. But um, yeah, it, it's so interesting though because we we get in this in this mode of like execution, productivity, just getting the job done. When I look at stopping to eat, it's it's only an inconvenience when I'm like in the middle of something, or when I look at the I'll say long term effects. If I stop now and i don't feel myself properly because maybe that also takes time to mm -hmm. prepare a nice meal then i'm going to be in a sort of a, a sleepy state we'll call it after i eat and i'm less productive than i was before so i think for like for me self-care even i have to zoom out and it's it's holistic so it's not only stopping and taking breaks but it's fueling myself with the right form of energy, like good quality foods and, and drinking plenty of water throughout the day. So it's, it's this whole approach. It's not like one quick little fix. And I'm curious how you feel about that statement. Yeah. And I, so the big picture is so important, right? And I, I know you talk about, right, like how, do, how do we get out of our own way? So with that awareness of, oh, if I wait too long, when I eat my blood sugar crashes, and then I'm useless, right, that doesn't feel good. Um, so like when you manage your schedule, can you and and again i'm not talking about you know go upstairs and cook a four course no one's talking about that right and no one got time for that but like what 
what you like. So when you cook on Sunday, can you meal prep some extra, right? Can you pack a lunch, like pack a lunch for yourself? If you work from home, stick a meal prepped in your fridge and know, okay, I've got 30 seconds to nuke it and 10 minutes to eat it. Right. Or even barring that, can I, can I keep some meal replacement shakes at my desk? But when you zoom out for that big picture, knowing, right, I have to take care of, like if, if I am my business, and I think many of your entrepreneurs are their own businesses, right? How do I care for myself so I can be productive? Right. And how can I frame it that I can build these, I can build my self-care into my schedule. Maybe I don't book back to back meetings from nine to six or from eight to eight. You know, maybe I can take a 30 minute break for lunch. Maybe I can walk away and get outside for five minutes and eat something nutritious and healthy that's going to fuel me for my day. Right. When you can build that into your schedule and you can see, oh, OK, I don't have a client at noon. I have a lunch break. Does that shift for you? Right. Like mm -hmm. we're in charge of our own schedules. Right. Sometimes. And when we have that control, can we take it? Knowing that we need to honor our own self and right, we we live in a human body and our human body has needs, right? We need to eat, we need to rest, we need to sleep, we need to move our bodies. How can we build that into our schedule? Yeah, that's that's great advice. And I think that's it's something to remember too. The the eating and the resting and and the quality of those two things really, really goes a long way. But with without them the burnout, like the hole you dig by being burned out actually oh, is harder yeah. to dig out of and it takes longer. So you're doing more long-term damage by having those quick little fixes of, you know, eating, eating junk or, or not eating in my example. Um, so I, I fully understand that. So when we look at the, what you're going to teach us with uh, three easy ways you, to improve your self-care, um, what I want to encourage you maybe as the listener to look at this in in for, through the lens of is how i used to do it which was for my employees how can i how can i install this in their lives so they don't burn out at work and that is a cool little voodoo trick of how i'm also going to get you to hear it too because i <laughs> i was always the first to help my employees take care of themselves their bodies their minds at work and make sure they don't burn out and I was the last one to do it myself. Uh, not the way I'm recommending you hear this episode, but I'm just going to say, look at it through that lens. Maybe that'll help you absorb the information. Listen as if you're going to teach and then take it into your own life too. So Elizabeth, with that, the listener is now armed to hear what you're going to tell them. Can we dive in to what you have for us? Where do we start with this? Well, I, I think I think we're starting already, right? With we're that started, self, I love it. <laughs> we've started, right? With the self care, with the and it it is it's so funny that you said that about you're the last one to take care of yourself, right? You're and I think it's human nature. It's so easy to give to everyone else, and almost every client I've ever worked with puts themselves last on the list, even if they even make it on the list. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know why that is. It must be something about human nature where it's easy to give to others and something about it being hard to receive. But I, I love that. Right. Listen as if and I would even offer listen as if you're going to take care of your best friend or your child. I like that. Right. Would you push your child? Don't eat lunch. Work harder. Be more. No. Oh, my God. Right. You're cringing as I'm saying. it. <laughs> so if you treat yourself like someone you love. How does that shift things for you? Mm, that's a powerful question. I, I really like that. Good. If it's not too personal, what comes up for you? Because I saw you had such a visceral reaction to that question. Yeah. Well, I'm, picturing, <laughs> I'm picturing if I go downstairs right now and I tell my kids, uh, it's, don't eat lunch because it's <laughs> you need to get more work done. Um, they're, they're young enough. They would just ignore me. Thank God. But um yeah, because I, I look at, you know, in my past, a, a few years ago in my last business, I, I ran to the point of exhaustion and, and past redlining for too long. I did burn out. I was, um, yeah. you know, I, I couldn't get out of bed. I was what you would, I guess, classify as as depressed to some degree. Like, it was really, really bad. And I, I almost threw everything away because of it. So I, I have that to lean back on. Some people have not got, gotten to that point yet. Hopefully they never do. And hopefully they hear this message from you and and they can avoid it and they can seek out counsel to prevent that. But when I hear you say that, it's 
it's the old uh, expression from the airplane, right? It's like put put your oxygen mask on first, and Absolutely. it's not it's not being selfish, which I think self care may sometimes come with that connotation, which is not true. It's you're you're taking care of yourself so that you exactly. can provide, so you can have the impact with your business, so you can be a good leader to your employees, to your family, a good husband, a good wife. Uh, there, there's so many other things that you need to have or that you want to take care of in your life, you have to be able to show up and you can't do that if you don't first take care of your own needs. Absolutely. That's one of the metaphors I use a lot, right? On the, on the yeah. airplane, they say, put your own oxygen mask on first, right? Why? So that you can help your children or your fellow passengers or whoever you're with, right? Because if you help them first and you pass out because you don't have enough oxygen, you can't be a help and support. And I am glad you mentioned that because I do think for so many people, they think, oh, taking time for myself is selfish, and, you know, when we try and give and give when there's nothing left because we haven't stopped to take care of ourselves, to eat, to exercise, to rest, we do burn out. And especially if you're supporting a business, right, if, if you if you're not functional, who's supporting you? So we have to fill our own cups. And I, I think it's such a pervasive myth that self-care is selfish and that it's somehow um, like not right to take care of yourselves. And I love that, you know, that image of like working with a child, like you would never tell your two year old, don't take a nap, keep working. Right. You, you, and, and somehow we, we intuitively understand this for our children, right? Our children need to nap. And what happens after they nap? It's a reset. They wake up, they're refreshed. They're joyful again. They're not tired and cranky. They're ready to go another round and they're fun to be around. And, you know, so are we, right? When we drain our own internal cups and we have nothing left to give, we're probably not so fun to be around. And we're probably not full of good ideas either. And if we have good ideas, we're probably not able to execute. So it's so counterintuitive, but taking that time to rest and step away and refuel allows you to come back refreshed so that you can give again. That That is such a powerful message, which I love because at, so at, at What If, at our company, we always, we help entrepreneurs get freedom from their business. With that freedom, do whatever you want. That's not my business, but you need to be unplugged from your business. Cause if you're, if your business requires you, that's a very dangerous position and it's only going to lead you closer to burnout. If anything mm -hmm. should happen to you, that means your business fails as well in, in a lot of cases. So I'm curious when, when we step in and the first thing we do is identify what's on your calendar that shouldn't be. And we try to eliminate 50% of your calendar within the first 90 days uh, to everyone we work with, regardless of how they approach us or what they what problem they approach us for. That's our first priority because we need to sustain the leader and the owner of the business. Mm. So with what you're saying here with self-care, self -care, what are some of the ways that um, I'm, I'm going to just steal this and use it with our clients? What, <laughs> how can we start to get them to both unplug, but also recharge? Because that's two different things, two completely different things, I think. What are some of the ways you do that with your clients? So one of the most powerful tools that I use is breath work. And I'll invite you to join, join in with me. So just like put your feet flat on the floor and like whoever's listening, join in, like put your feet on the floor, put your back up straight, you know, unless you're driving, close your eyes. If, if you're, if it's safe to do so. And like, just take a nice, easy breath in through your nose for a count of three or four. So inhale and just sigh it out through an open mouth for a count of four. And repeat that twice. Easy. Inhale. And sigh it out. And one more time. Easy. Inhale. And sigh it out. And like open your eyes. I already feel better. Isn't that amazing? Easy. It's, it's so, so easy. amazing to me that 20 set, right? Cause I, I know we're all so stinking busy and life moves so stinking fast. And I know none of us have time for anything, right? But I know no matter how busy you are, you can take, that was 21 seconds, right? We inhale for three, we exhale for four, seven seconds times three, 21 seconds. You have 21 seconds to pause and just come back to yourself. And for those 20 seconds, right? You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to make a decision. There's nothing to do other than focus on your breath and be in your body as you breathe. And it's always, always amazing to me how, what a difference that makes. And let's say we add that into your calendar. Let's say 
you just link it to when you brush your teeth. Let's say before or after you brush your teeth, you take 21 seconds for yourself. What kind of difference do you think that would make for you? Yeah, I, I was even going to say, you know, let's let's go further. And I don't want to overwhelm people with it. But what's your what's your practice for preparing for a meeting or a client call or uh, a meeting with one of your employees? Like that's when you that's when you need to do that kind of stuff, because for me, what that just did, I mean, hopefully you did it with us while you're listening and watching to this. But for me, that was, it was a grounding, it was a recentering, and it was just all, yeah. all the rest of the noise that's on my computer monitors kind of went away. First of all, because my eyes were closed, so that's fantastic. But also because you're only focused on that one thing. And then you can mm -hmm. show up to whatever that next thing that you're going to is. So I, I know you said incorporate it into the things that you're kind of doing anyway, like, a, like brushing your teeth. But how how often should we be doing that throughout the day? As often as you need. That's the beauty of it, right? It's free. It's portable, right? We always have our breath with us. It's not like, oh, I forgot to pack it. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you, then you're screwed. That's a different issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different issue, right? But it's free. It's portable. It's, it's always available. And we just have to remember to use it. But I love your point, right? Before an employee meeting, before a, uh, an investor meeting, before a presentation, before anything, you can pause and ground and center yourself. And I do think sometimes we get so caught up and right, this is another piece of that burnout, right? That emotional exhaustion when we're always spinning in our mind of, well, what about this? And what about that? And I've got so much to do. And what if this happens? And right, that when we can kind of hit the pause button on all of that and just connect to our breath and be present in our bodies, all of that stuff falls away and we just get to be. And then I think that allows us to show up in a different kind of a way because we're more, we're just more present, right? Our mind isn't thinking a thousand things in a thousand directions. We're just really present. And I think that's the point when we can make good decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's the point when we, like, we have more of ourselves available, if you will. Yeah. And that's so important, especially running a business or, you know, you said a lot of your clients are are busy working moms. That's that's got to be the hardest job in the world to balance motherhood with anything else. Is I, I don't know. I'll speak from experience. I don't know how my wife does it half the time. I don't know how many women do. That is the most complex task or set of tasks you could do. So, with that in mind, and you just brought something up: the, the ability to make a decision or reduce your stress or overwhelm. A lot of our clients have decision fatigue which is a very real thing both for running a business being being a mom you have to make so many decisions in a day and on top of pausing and breathing what are some other ways we can reduce our stress in the moment and also make better clearer decisions so one of the tools that i love to use you can imagine that you're trying on a decision like you're trying on a coat I'm sure everyone's had the experience of trying on a coat, right? So you right, can take a deep breath to ground yourself and you say, okay, let's imagine I do plan A and just like close your eyes and imagine putting it on like you're putting on a coat. And then I invite you and your listeners to tune in to your body, right? Some coats feel warm and cozy and like you can't wait to put them on and zip them up and others don't feel good. They're too tight or they're right tight in the arms or that we can't zip it or it, it just doesn't feel good. So when you try on your decision, tune into your body and just do a quick little body scan of how does this decision feel in my own body? Because our bodies have so much information about for us if we only remember to stop and check in. So right the same way maybe one coat is too tight under the arms and we can't move and we feel constricted, maybe a decision feels like that but you won't know unless you try it on and tune in. So after you're done, like, okay, I'm going to try on decision A and I'm going to see how it feels in my body. Okay. And then you literally imagine taking it off and like hanging it back up on the hanger and then try on decision B, see how that feels in your body. And what I find when I use this with my clients is that they get such good information and they often find they have so much more clarity of, okay, I know what that decision felt like in my body. And now because I know which one like felt tight and which one felt good, I know what I'm going with. Yeah, that's powerful. Your, your body's 
your body, your intuition has a lot of feedback if you can tune into it and listen, but usually we ignore it and that's shame on us for doing that. So Elizabeth, this has been phenomenal. First of all, thank you for all this advice you gave us. Uh, you gave us 30 seconds of grounding, which was totally free. Remember, you can do that at any time for free. You gave us so much actionable advice. Um, you do have a, a download for us too. I'm going to put your website on the screen, um, but you can, can you also talk to us about the, the download you have for the listener? Yeah, sure. So it's just that that breath work, that 30 second breath work, because again, I find it's right. It's not that we don't know what to do. It's that we often forget to do it. Mm. So people who may not have done a lot of breath work may not feel so comfortable leading themselves. So it's just me leading you through a quick 30 second breath work reset. So I offer that to all of your listeners. So to help them find that grounding and that sense of inner peace, because let's face it, we can all use more inner peace. Yes, we can, and you can use it at any point in the day. Uh, also for free. Thank you again. Look at look at all this value you're you're giving us on this episode, and you even flipped the episode around and coached me on my own podcast. Which <laughs> I love. Thank I you hope for, that was okay. Thank no, you. For it, was, it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I appreciate that because um, I I got a lot from it too, and I better understood what you were what you were getting at, and I think the listener does too because I, me, my listeners, the the busy business owners out here. We're, we're making decisions. We're stressed. We have a million things on our mind. Pause. Just if you take nothing else from this episode, pause, breathe, connect with yourself and make sure you take care of yourself so that you can go make those important decisions, but make them with confidence and with clarity. We always talk about that on this show. Clarity, confidence. The third C is community. That's when you work with us or you work with people like Elizabeth and you can go get around other people moving forward in your business, in your life. Elizabeth, Thank you again for, for coming on here and giving us this little reset um, in, in the middle of our day or whenever you're listening to this. For oh, you, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And for you, the listener, uh, thank you for joining us. We do this for you. That's why we're here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and drop your takeaways in the comments. What'd you get from this? If you just say pause, that's fantastic. I want to know if you will pause at some point in your day today and then moving forward so you can recharge yourself and move forward and make the right decisions. I appreciate you joining us for Harmonious at Lunch. We will see you on the next episode.